this is Kurt from The Cool Odyssey coming to you today from our mooch docking spot here in Arizona uh, to talk to you about a new addition to our uh, fleet, I guess you would call it. Uh, we have here a 2009 Honda TW200 and this is uh, the newest addition to our uh, travel. Uh, we decided, or I should say I decided, I'd like to have a trail bike. I kind of miss having quads and side-by-sides back from when we were in our sticks and bricks. So I think having a trail bike like this along with me is going to give me a chance to get out and explore the trails and some of the things I missed doing uh, from before. So a couple things were a requirement in Tony allowing me to bring a bike like this along. Uh, number one, obviously, I had to figure out a way to carry it along with us. Uh, number two, I had to be able to take care of it, loading, unloading, and all the dealing with it by myself. So I did a lot of research trying to find some sort of a rack to use on the back of our Seneca that uh, I could operate myself and that would handle the bike and be easy to use. And I just wasn't happy with anything that I was finding. And another thing I was interested in being able to do is being able to put this bike on the back of our Jeep Liberty so that if we get places where we want to use our kayak and perhaps kayak down a river, we can use the Jeep to shuttle back and forth and have the bike on the back of the Jeep so we can leave the Jeep at our takeout point and ride the motorcycle back to where we're going to put in with the kayak. So I wanted something that could be versatile and could work on both vehicles uh, that would be sturdy. So having no luck finding anything on the market, I decided I'd go ahead and make something for myself. And I want to start out by saying I don't have any drawings, I don't have any plans, I don't have any... Uh, real information that I can provide on what I did. I kind of designed this on the go and to meet our needs and without the intention of it being sold or anything like that. So if someone's interested in making something similar to what I've made here, hopefully there's enough information in this video that someone can put their own skills to work and come up with something. So what I'd like to do is kind of explain what I've done and what I've built and show you how it operates. One thing I noticed in a lot of my searching for the different motorcycle options to haul in the back of an RV, they're either very, very expensive and built to carry a very heavy motorcycle or just way too lightweight. Our motorcycle, the TW200, weighs only 270 pounds, so it's relatively light. But at the same time, I wanted it to be secure on the back of the RV. And there are a lot of people who make motorcycle racks that will go into your receiver hitch but they tend to have too much play for me. So I wanted to design something that was much more sturdy. So what I've done here is I started out by adding two additional receiver hitches onto our existing receiver hitch. And I'll put a little link here or a little picture in the corner of the video that kind of shows what I've done. But I basically have just bolted on two new additional receiver hitches. So that way I was able to make one solid piece here from each side and come out. And so now I have a rack that doesn't have any of the side to side play. Uh, the rack itself, I built from 3 16 C channel that's six inches wide. And my uprights are all two inch by two inch by quarter inch. So everything is extremely strong. I think the rack probably weighs close to 180 pounds itself. So there is some uh, substantial weight to the rack, but my goal was to make something that would be strong and we wouldn't have to worry about back here and it'd be good and secure. So uh, another thing I wanted that was a requirement was I wanted this rack to have the bike high enough up that you could still see our license plate. I wanted to keep it between the tail lights, but I wanted it to be high enough up that I would also have room to clear our tow bar and still tow the Jeep. And we wanted to still be able to make full tight turns in the, G in the motorhome towing the Jeep without impacting the rack in any way and we've done some testing and we can do a full driver side left hand turn and this support here on the rack is still a good 8 to 10 inches away from the Jeep at any given time so this rack stays clear of the Jeep so one of the things I did in designing this was keep the rack as close to the RV as possible so that there's not a lot of space there the handlebars actually are within three or four inches of the back of the RV um, I'll show a little picture from the side here that kind of gives you an idea of the distance. So this rack was designed, I put a winch on here on the front because basically the rack tips up and allows me to pull the bike up with the winch so that I can operate it by myself. 
So I'll kind of demonstrate how that works. The rack will hinge on these pins. So in order for me to get the rack ready to load the bike, I have to actually remove these cotter pins. And this rear pin actually goes into this rear slot. And then this front pin actually just gets removed for the time being. And then I have a ramp that I've built and it's attached at the rear of the rack so that it has a place to ride when we're driving. And I just have my ramp secured with some wing nuts and bolts. And then that frees up our ramp. And then I'm going to go and get all the parts and pieces. I've made myself a little tool bag where I keep all the parts that I need for operating the rack and putting the rack on and off and taking it on, putting it together. So I have an extra pin here. And the ramp is secured to the end of the rack with one of the pins. I also have a cable that I've made that hooks into the front of the rack and to the base of the rack that prevents the rack from tipping too far. And also in order for the rack to tip, this bar that's used to tie the motorcycle down sticks actually through our ladder. So it's been made so that it can be removed. And then my cable attaches to that point. and clips to my rack. As far as loading the bike, I utilize the winch to pull the bike up, and as the bike comes up, the rack actually raises to this position here, and then the winch pulls the bike the rest of the way up, and then it comes back down just simply by gravity. So I'll demonstrate how this works. The winch itself, I've set up so that it actually just plugs into our trailer connector since there's not a lot of draw on the winch, it's not working very hard to pull the lightweight motorcycle onto the rack. All right, so the power is secured for the winch, and the winch is actually operated with a remote control, which I'll show you how that works. And now I'll get the bike ready. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is get my cable extended. This is the wireless remote that came with the winch. Okay, so now basically we're ready to load the motorcycle. I use the wireless winch in my hand, left hand on my handlebar as I'm allowing the bike to go up the ramp. So I'll just demonstrate how it works.
as simple as that. Now I've got the motorcycle up on the rack. So I can handle that by myself. The winch holding it allows the bike to stay stable so I can get everything strapped on. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put all my straps on and kind of give you an idea of how we anchor this thing down and then show you how we take the bike back up. Okay, so here we have the motorcycle all set up as it would be for traveling. So what we've done here, the ramp is back stowed away. I have these turnbuckles on here that I've installed that hook to the foot pegs and it just gives some nice side to side stability to the bike on the rack. And then pretty typical of motorcycle racks such as this, there's a strap at the front of each side of the bike that goes to the handlebars and draws it down. So that gives me my good side to side stability. I do also leave the winch connected, which keeps the bike pulled up against the front. So really the bike is pretty well locked onto the rack. The tail lights are still visible from both sides and the Jeep is still 100% able to be towed and dealt with without the rack being in the way. So that's kind of the uh, design and how we built it. And we do also have a motorcycle cover that I purchased that covers the entire bike as well as the winch itself during transport so the bike is covered and kept out of the weather. Give you an idea what that looks like. All right, so here's the TW200 all secured to the back of the RV in its rack with the cover so it's protected and out of the weather and this is kind of the way we'll be transporting the bike all around the country as we travel. So now I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the reverse process of taking the bike off the rack and then I'll show you how the rack works with our Jeep Liberty. Okay getting ready to do the reverse take the bike back off the rack one thing I failed to mention is the ramp I built I did put some wheels down here on the bottom so that allows this ramp to kind of go out as it goes up. So I'll demonstrate now the reverse taking the bike back off. So there you have it, simple as that, bikes off the rack. So I'll get this thing out of the way and what I'll show you next is how I'm able to utilize this same rack on our Jeep Liberty. Okay, so here's our Jeep Liberty and I'll kind of demonstrate how the rack is gonna work on this. So for this purpose, I did have to go with the more traditional single receiver tube into the center on the Jeep. And then it has this two inch by four inch piece here that the rack actually sits on top of and the pins hold it in. Uh, this design obviously will do a little bit more shaking from side to side, but we don't haul the bike that often on the Jeep. So this is just something to use every now and then only for probably a few miles. And I did make some provisions to strap this rack down to the safety chain connectors. So I'll give you an idea of how this thing goes together. We'll go get the rack off the motorhome. Okay, I'm going to be the first one to admit this is not the easiest part of the operation. I think that this piece of 3 16 inch channel along with the winch and uh, everything here probably weighs a good 60 to 70 pounds. So moving it by myself isn't the easiest thing in the world. It can be done, but it would be nicer with help. But I definitely can do it by myself, which is how it was designed. So I'm going to go ahead and get this lifted off and we'll go put it onto the Jeep. Okay, so here's the setup all now attached to the Jeep. You can see I've already got the ramp on and I've got the 
rack attached to the receiver. Uh, it is leaning kind of this way because there's a lot of weight at that end of the rack right now without the bike being on here. So I'll go get the bike, bring it on. One thing that's nice about using this on the Jeep is I don't need to use the winch. I can actually just push it up manually. So there you have it. Just push it right up on here so now I can take the bike on the Jeep for doing shuttling or whatever happened to need to do. Won't bore you with all the rest of the details. The, the locking down of the bike and tying everything down is exactly the same on the Jeep as it is on the RV. And getting it off is really simple too. And there we go, simple as that. Okay, so we're back over here at the Seneca to give you a, kind of an idea of how the rack portion works that's on the RV. So as you can see, we have the same two, and a, two inch by four inch square tubing here with the holes to receive the pins for the motorcycle tray. The difference between this and the one on the Jeep, obviously, is that this is mounted on two receivers, uh, which, I mean, Obviously this is super stout because the bike stays on here all the time and we want it to be good and super strong. So this rack would just stay like this all the time. So, Okay, well I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys found that uh, inspirational and helpful. And as I said, I didn't do any kind of drawings or measurements that I kept or anything like that. It was just all kind of made by the seat of my pants. Uh, everyone who has seen it has told me it's probably overbuilt, but I'd rather have it be overbuilt than have a problem with it later. So we appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning into the video. If you like this video, please subscribe and check out some of our other content. And we'll be back to you again soon.